presents an inspiring gospel reflection by Father Michael Sparrow. Father Michael is a Jesuit priest working as a writer and retreat master at the Bellarmine Jesuit Retreat House outside Chicago. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. And as he was entering a village, 10 lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voice saying, Jesus, master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, go, show yourself to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing that he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has no one but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Gratitude, a key virtue. Today's gospel is the gospel that is used on Thanksgiving Day, and appropriately so. Gratitude open our hearts to the fullness of the realization of how much God loves us. The last two weeks, we've had 12-step recovery retreats at Bellarmine, and the, both of the retreat masters who were speaking emphasized the importance of gratitude. When we, when we struggle with any kind of addiction, the nature of addiction is that it forces us to focus on our problems and our resentments, our grudges. And the result is the addiction increases. If we want to get healthy, if we want to get free of addiction, if we want to grow in interior freedom, focus on gratitude. Not what's wrong, but what's right in our lives. Gratitude is essentially truth because the reality is that God is constantly blessing us. Do you remember the song Big Yellow Taxi by Joni Mitchell? Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? There's such an essential truth in that. We take so many of our blessings for granted until they're gone. And then we recognize, oh my goodness. We have a tendency to focus on the problem, what's wrong rather than what's right. The saints are those who learn to be grateful even in the midst of problems and struggles. If we wait to be grateful until all the problems are solved, then we're simply never going to be grateful because there's never going to be a time in our life when there isn't some kind of problem that besets us. Did you catch the Alleluia verse just before the gospel today? St. Paul says from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks, when? In all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 
The saints are those who learn that truth, that there's never a time, never a time in our life where we aren't called to live in gratitude. Even the cursory reading of the Acts of the Apostles reminds us of this. The apostles are whipped, they're thrown into, into prison, they're stoned, they're left for dead. And what do they do? They give thanks to God that they're counted worthy to suffer for the sake of the name of Jesus Christ. An extraordinary example of that in modern culture is Saint Aunt Maximilian Kolbe, thrown into prison in Auschwitz, being starved to death, forced to, in the midst of his own excrement, living in crowded conditions with, with other prisoners, just waiting for the Nazis, the Nazis simply waiting for him to die. And what does he do? He leads his fellow prisoner in songs of thanks and gratitude. Is that extraordinary holiness or what? The opposite is how we usually live, nursing our wounds, counting our misfortunes, feeding our grudges, continuing to think on so-and-so that cheated us. We, we didn't get what we deserve. Why is my life so hard? How come everybody else has it so much easier than I do? That kind of attitude, which is often the space that so many of us live in, increases our suffering. It doesn't make anything better. It only makes it worse. We live in a scientific age, don't we? And there have been survey after survey after survey that scientifically says when you focus on gratitude, you get healthier. One of the surveys that I was looking at listed five things that when we are grateful, change us. And they especially emphasize the importance of writing it down, because when we write it down, it emphasizes it, it, it strengthens us. We see it in, in blue and white or black and white, that yes, this is true. Number one, when we're grateful, it increases positivity. So many of us get caught in this loop of negativity. Write down five things every day that you're grateful for, and notice how it changes your mental attitude. Number two, it improves self-esteem. So many of us struggle with poor self-images, don't we? We're constantly comparing ourselves to other people. Write down five things every day that you're grateful for. And athletes noticed that when they do this, their performance increases. Number three, it helps you sleep better. <laughs> How many of us are tossing and turning at night? Write down five things you're grateful for every night before you go to sleep and slumber in peace. <laughs> Number four, it makes you happier. Who of us don't want to be happy? Write down five things every day that you're grateful for and notice your depression lifting, your anxiety decreasing. Number five, it reduces stress. Is there anybody here in the chapel, anybody watching this on YouTube that isn't struggling with stress in their life? Please raise your hand if you're living a stress-free free life. <laughs> Write down five things every day you're grateful for and notice your stress reducing. This isn't the Catholic Church saying, you should be grateful. This is the AA program, a bunch of drunks saying, I want to get sober, focus on gratitude. This is the scientific community studying this and saying, when you're grateful, your life changes for the better. I don't think there's anybody that would disagree with that. The problem is we don't do it. We tend to take the blessings for granted and we get caught up in this loop of negativity. And there's lots of reasons for that. It's not like we turn on the radio and here's the news flash. 
great news coming in from all over the world. It's not like we pick up the newspaper and we're just inspired with all of these ins wonderful stories. We turn on the television at night before we go to bed and we hear all these wonderful stories of things that are happening in the world, right? Wrong. Good news doesn't sell newspapers. Tragedies, hardships, scandals, that's the stuff that attracts us fascinates us. And yet the result of that constant ingest of garbage is it depresses us. It stresses us out. It makes our life worse. What's the antidote? Focus on gratitude. There's a simple practice called the Ignatian Examine that you've heard me talk about many times. St. Ignatius encourages us as we begin the examine to look at what's right and to spend 15 minutes once or twice a day focusing on gratitude. So let's practice that. Let me end this reflection by taking a few moments to just lead you in a simple guided reflection. You can do this with your eyes opened or your eyes closed. If your eyes are open, I invite you to focus on the crucifix, this great sign of Jesus' love for us. Take a few deep breaths, breathing in God's love and light and strength. We're going to pray in thanksgiving for our physical gifts, our emotional gifts, our intellectual gifts, our material gifts our spiritual gifts. Just feel how you're feeling right now. Acknowledge it. You're in a good place. You're in a bad place. What's going on in your body physically? What's going on in your mind? Where are you emotionally? For all that's positive, breathe it in. For all that's negative, choose to let go of it. Breathing in God's blessing, letting go of all that holds us back. Let's just be grateful for the gift of our senses, the gift of our sight, the fact that we can see, the gift of our hearing, we can hear the gift of tasting. We can taste and relish good food that we can touch, that we can smell. These basic senses that we so often take for granted until they're taken away. When our sight fails, when our hearing fails, when our tasting, touching, and smelling fails, and then we say, oh, I had it so good. We have those gifts now. I have a friend who is going outside today for the first time in three months. A friend of his is taking him outside in a wheelchair. He's been too sick to simply even go outside. There's a young man that I've been praying for that's been in the hospital for the last three months. Two days ago, he was at death's door. We take our health for granted. Take a moment to thank God, to relish this gift. Emotionally, who are the people that love you? Who are the people whom you love? Yeah, we, our noses get 
bent out of joint, we bruise each other, we say stupid things, they say stupid things. They do things that hurt us, we do things that hurt them. But think about the people that you love the most and who love you the most. What would your life be like without them? What do you want to say to God for the gift of these loved ones? Intellectually, the gifts that we have, that we can remember, that we can reason, that we can imagine, that we can choose. A dear friend of mine is losing his memory right now. These intellectual gifts that we have, that we exercise day in and day out, that we simply take for granted. What do you want to say to God for these gifts of memory and reason and imagination and will? Materially, we are blessed with such abundance. The fact that we have a home, a roof, heat, transportation, electronics, clothes, food. Father Jim Geschwin, the senior member of our Jesuit community at Bellarmine, is fond of saying, The people in Ukraine would love to have what we complain about. My car got dirty. I have to clean my house. I have to do the laundry. What steak again? These gifts that we take for granted. What do you want to say to God? For the gift of our faith, for the word of God that teaches us, inspires us, guides us, for the sacraments of our baptism, of knowing ourselves to be God's beloved, of reconciliation that our sins can be forgiven, for Eucharist, that we are fed and nourished and become what we eat, the body of Christ, blessed with holy marriage or sacred orders, or a sacred single life. Anointed. What do we want to say to God for the gift of our faith? Lord, we praise you and we bless you for all the ways in which you continue to show your love for us, for all the ways in which you continue to labor for us, for all the ways in which you draw us ever closer to yourself, that we may realize who we are and that our destiny lies in you. Help us, dear Lord, every day to take the time to say thank you to remember where we've come from, where we are, and where we are going. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heart to 
heart.